Hey everybody, welcome back to Northern Lion Place of Binding of Isaac After Birth Plus with the one lost streaks, right, Ruka? You give him a little pat on the head. He looked at me when I said his name. You gotta reinforce that behavior. Aruka! That time he's like, he's not even paying attention. Don't even. For a pat on the head, I don't think so, brother. Maybe for some wet food. Anyway, here's the thing. Did we win as the lost? It's up for debate. When we won, we weren't the lost. But when we started the run, we were the lost. Does that count as a lost win? Yes. You know why? The last person in the clubhouse gets to make the rules. <laughs> All the rules for speed running and streaking, etc., etc., they're formed uh, on a community basis. This is my streak, okay? I think if you, st the rule as codified, hey, if you scratch my computer, I'm gonna be very upset, my son. i will be very unhappy, okay? Do not do that. He's done it. No, we've done it, I mean. He hasn't done it, he stopped. But uh, as long as you set the rules up, hey, you got the rules set up. I don't think you should have to be like, hey, my streak ended. Just because, I mean, it's hard to keep track of as well. You gotta keep eight different counters going. You gotta put splits up in the top right of the screen. That's beyond my uh, technical acumen, let's be honest. Like programming in Java. Now, so far, I mean, three wins? It's three wins, right? Three wins in a row was the lost. Nothing to sneeze at. And to be honest, I was just about to say, this one looks like it's starting off a little scary. Uh, only we ended up picking up uh, Little Brim. Little Brim is far from uh, an assured victory. All in as lonesome. However, dude, I think we'll save a bomb. Even though we could probably get a nickel, I want to save a bomb just in case we needed to kill a boss or any difficult room. Honestly, um, we don't have the money to get into the shop right now, regardless. So I wouldn't get too, or sorry, we don't have the key necessary to get in the shop right now regardless, so I wouldn't get yourself too twisted up over it one way or the other. Good stuff. To not be on notice immediately when fighting the haunt feels very nice. And I feel like, you know, the world's our oyster right now. Just don't be dumb. Be smart instead. Basically, you don't need to dodge in the same direction that he's moving. We'll only do that to keep damage high. Head down to the next floor. So far, so good. Let me hydrate. It's a Friday, by the way. TGIF. That's what the kids say these days. Guaranteed. Uh, no damage taken. Love to see it. Always scary to go in those rooms. It's a calculated risk. Small rock, please. Fridays are Fridays for me, now that I take Saturdays off, so, you know, on Friday, you know, you work hard, and then you leave uh, feeling good. Oh, dude, absolutely beloved blank card. Um, let me close the door here for a moment. <laughs> it's not meant to insult my wife, who is a better singer than I am, but there is a Twitch Sings bounty right now, which uh, may have led to you hearing some... It's just for the copywritten material. It's not because it's unpleasant. I promise you that. Um, but yeah, you work hard on Friday, you get a day off on the weekend. What's going on this weekend? Parental units coming in. Excited to spend some time with them. Uh, it was, you know, some birthdays. Not my birthday, but, you know, family birthdays. Anniversaries, good dinners, better the ingredients, better pizza, Papa John's. Probably will not get Papa John's, to be honest. Uh, Papa John's is not, uh, well, I, I wouldn't say it's unpopular in Vancouver, but it's not one of the most popular pizza chains here. Definitely the, the two biggest ones have got to be uh, a company called Panago and a company called Uncle Fatty's Pizza. I'm not messing with you. Yes, it does sound like Uncle Fatty's Pizza. Um, in the United States, you have a pizzeria that's very popular, named after the shape of the building that it's served in. Anyway, I'm just trying to say we're all sons of guns here. I will say... I, I, dude, Blue Candle's so good, but we gotta try 
something along those lines, I think. Um, the thing is, I love Vancouver. I think Vancouver is an amazing food city. Had some awesome sushi last night. I'll go to bed for Vancouver sushi. Any day of the week. Dude, that's a real damage upgrade. Definitely should have blank carded, but it's a long video. Hopefully. Uh, you know, when it comes to cheap dining, when it comes to fine dining, uh, you know, gastro pub culture, a lot of people, I mean, when it comes to hipster stuff, it's really good. Um, which is fine for me, because that's the kind of food that I like to eat a lot of the time. Uh, and healthy stuff as well, if you're into that. But, Vancouver, in my opinion, is sorely lacking a quality pizza scene. I've been, you know, I'm not saying that there's no good pizza places in the city. That's not fair. Um, what is, don't argue pizzeria. It's like a Brooklyn type pizzeria, supposedly. Um, pizza Garden's pretty good. I'm, this, is, this is a Vancouver episode now. Dude, lots of good items, too. Um, pizza Garden's pretty good. Panago's serviceable, but it's definitely, it's its own thing. If you're in... If you came from New York and you're like, hey, let's get a pizza, and I got Panago, you would be like, why is there a salad on top of my pizza? And I'd be like, well, that's because I ordered the salad pizza. You don't like a salad pizza? That's the one, if I could, well, I don't know, I haven't really made a habit of eating pizza lately. I'm not trying to be like, you know, a snob about it, but, you know, people are like, nothing tastes as good as being in shape feels, except for pizza. And I'm like, dude, pizza's good, but I don't know, I don't... <laughs> I don't want to be that enabler, you know? Maybe I take myself too seriously, but I'm like, pizza's good, but, you know, it is bad for you most of the time. It's not the worst thing in the world. But, you know, I think I think there's other things that I would put as the, the predominant, you know, best tasting food. I don't know. I don't, I don't know if I have a favorite food. I, I know that sounds crazy. I'm not saying it's juvenile to have a favorite food. All I'm saying is that I think favorite food is one of those questions that you come up with an answer at one point in your life, and then you never think about it again. So my personal opinion is way more comical, which is that nobody actually knows what their favorite food is, or very few people at least. And instead, they've just been answering, you know, they had like a favorite food until they were like 16. And then when they became an adult, they're like, okay, time to change my favorite food from pizza to sushi. But I think on some days, if I put a pizza in front of you and I put some sushi in front of you, you would change what you ate. That's what I'm just saying. I don't know if I have a if I have a favorite food. I got it. I like a lot of foods. I like almost all foods. But having a favorite, I don't know. It's one of those questions I always cringed at. You know, you ever go uh, you go away for summer vacation? You don't even have to go away. I just mean you go away from school for summer vacation. And then you come back. Teachers are always trying to get you to do stuff like, uh, you know, hey, interview the person sitting across from you and learn something about, uh, you know, what they did on their summer vacation. You know, here's some questions to get you started. So, What's your, what's your favorite color? Oh, I like blue. Whoa, we're really getting into the deep stuff now. You like blue? That's crazy. I like red. We're really hitting it off. What'd you do on your summer vacation? I just I have very vivid memories, you know? Most of my summer vacations were spent, you know, until I, you know, started to work at least. They were spent uh, idly wasting time on the internet. So I would always have to almost make something up. You know, I would be like, oh, what I do on the summer vacation? Me and my parents went camping, and it was awesome. Meanwhile, when I was on the camping trip, I was just playing Game Boy Advance F-Zero the whole time. <laughs> but I gotta pretend that it was adventurous. There's a social pressure not to be like, I had a pretty kicking time just hanging back playing World Series Baseball 2003, you know? Panzer Dragoon Orta. Watching Neon Genesis Evangelion. Uh, what was I in there? It doesn't matter. I'm not trying to say... You might think it's a trademark NL rant. No adult has a favorite food. That's not what I'm trying to say. 
I'm just saying I think it's one of those questions that you answer automatically without thinking about it sometimes. You know, if I... I want to see, like, a CAT scan. Like, if I show you what... Or if I ask you the question, what's your favorite food, and you got your brain hooked up to electrodes, are you actually evaluating foods together? Or are you just going, I've always... Uh, the right answer to this question is what I've always said, you know, chicken tenders. There is an interest thing. I, it, it's in the meme genesis stage. But uh, I've seen a few memes about chicken tenders. I'm not. I slapped the chicken tenders out of her hand. I said, "You don't understand." Of course, I'm familiar with that one. Live my life on the internet. But uh, you know, the meme is a template. Like you know, picky eaters when they see a restaurant menu that doesn't have chicken tenders on it, and it's always just like a horrified face or like someone running away like as fast as they can. You get the general idea, right? It's not that cerebral. But it did lead me to wonder, why is it that chicken tenders, uh, and, and I mean, there's probably a few other foods, like pizza's definitely on there, but why, uh, why are chicken tenders like the quintessential picky eater food? I mean, it, I feel like I have some shortcuts in my mind as to why that would be the case. I mean, mostly because they're delicious. <laughs> Look, I'm an adult. Like I said, I take myself too seriously. But what's not to like about a chicken tender? I have definitely ordered chicken tenders for myself at a restaurant within the past 12 months. And enjoyed them, by the way. Why not? Um, but, like, what is it that makes a chicken tender more innately likable to picky eaters than other plain foods... Uh, that, that wouldn't necessarily challenge their taste buds, you know what I mean? Like, obviously a chicken tender is just, you know, is crunchy meat. And you can dip it in something that, that meets your standards, right? But, like, why that over, I don't know, turkey sandwich? Why that over, uh, a hamburger, you know what I mean? What is it about deep-fried strips of chicken? Maybe it's just a cultural thing. Maybe it's actually not that uh, common, or not that ubiquitous, I should say, amongst picky eaters to only like chicken tenders. I mean, I saw that video on TLC of the woman who, um, you know, she's in her 30s or 40s, and for every meal she just eats pizza with mayonnaise on top of it. Somebody's got to check up on that lady. It's the lady who's really into the Ninja Turtles. Look, I say this not from a position of, of, of hate, but certainly it would be dishonest to say that it's not from a position of judgment something's obviously wrong there look I'm oh I didn't realize we were this close to the end of the we're going too fast well you know, all I'm gonna say is at least I don't eat pizza and mayonnaise for every meal but you know I I, I can be a pretty enlightened person you know I'm very tolerant of somebody you know they want to live their life in a way that's different from the way I live my life, I don't really care. All I'm gonna say is that if you eat pizza with mayonnaise on it for every single meal, that is where I would start to ask some questions about your well-being. If you're watching this and you eat pizza with mayonnaise for every meal, I'm not saying you can't. I mean like your body might tell you that eventually, but you're probably okay for a bit. Um, I'm more just like, why are you doing this? Because <laughs> it seems like... Look, I'm I'm trying to pussyfoot around this, and maybe I shouldn't. The thing is, I, I eat a lot of very similar meals, but I get like a, you know, I get a variety of foods in my life, you know? There's a there's a nutrient profile that, that gets filled out by the foods that I eat. Yeah, you know, I eat a lot of, you know, protein bars and, you know, the, like, made fun of mercilessly for eating, uh, you know, chicken tortillas. The thing is, you know, I also eat, like, quite a lot of vegetables. The pizza can have vegetables, but I don't want to get into this, you know, discussion over whether or not it's given you enough vegetable content. Especially, I haven't even discussed as of yet the presence of the mayonnaise, but anyway. I just wonder. I get why 
pizza would be something people would be more picky about than chicken tenders. Well, I'm just playing it very coy here. Because pizza, you know, it's got a different texture going on, you know, there's pizza, and this is stuff that I mean, it's like, you know, little babies eat pizza, but you get what I mean, you know, like, there's a crust. Nothing makes, and I'm not trying to, I'm, I'm, in some biting the hand that feeds, I know a lot of people that are watching this are gonna be, I hope you're not alienated, I'm just spitballing, okay? But nothing annoys me more when I'm at a group event than, like, is it just like a pizza box opened up, no slices of pizza left, and then in the other side of the box, there's like eight crusts just sitting there. Look, I'm not saying you have to eat your pizza crust. I, I, I don't see why you wouldn't to begin with. First off, it's bread, and bread is delicious. Secondly, I don't like crust is a nonsense statement, because you've already eaten a bunch of crust under the pizza. Secondly, we're in an era of dipping. Just, just dip it. Dip it in something you like. And the third thing here is, even if you don't eat your crust, don't put the pizza crust back in the box. Were you raised in the freaking barn? I mean, if you're at your home, do whatever you want. But it, like at a public event, I've seen it happen. Put it in the in the garbage can or the you know if they got a compost, put it in the compost or something. You don't just put it back in the box. What do you think a stranger is going to be like? Ooh, <laughs> has anybody called dibs on the crust pile yet? I've eaten some meals I'm not proud of in my life. I'm not going to eat eight strangers' orphaned pizza crusts. That's too much for even me. Anyway. And it's got, there's tomato sauce involved, and, you know, it's got dairy, which can freak some people out. I'm not saying many people, I'm just saying in general. Anyway. I don't want to go off on a rant here. Because I've, I've been on the picky eater rant too many times. I mean, you could make the same meme about myself, you know, before the age of 17 or 18. Me going to a restaurant and seeing that, you know, there's nothing on the menu that... Wait, what do you mean there's no chicken sandwich on the menu? You got chicken. You got bread. Five easy pieces, Jack Nicholson. Look it up, sweetheart. Please beat the odds. We're... Okay, that's fine. We're doing really well, obviously. We just beat, um... Mom's heart. 15 minutes into the run. Let me hydrate. The thing is, I don't think we're a lock to win yet. I, I think we're doing pretty well, for sure. But things could go wrong pretty easily. I would love to pick up basically like any kind of defensive card. Why even pick it up? A defensive reusable card would be nice. I don't know, an Algis, I guess, is not necessarily a card, but you get the idea. I'm, I'm not anti-picky eater. I think that, you know, and I've said this many occasions, I do think for, for picky eaters, every single one of them that I've ever talked to says, like, it is genetic. And I'm like, nah, dude. <laughs> That I know everybody else is psychosomatic, but my picky eating is genetic. And I'm like, okay. That's like, you know, I was the same way when people told me I was balding. You know? People were like, hey, your hair is thinning, and it's, uh, your hairline's receding. I was like, nah. It's just always been like that. I've always had thin hair, and it's always been at a widow's peak, like Vegeta from Dragon Ball Z. This is probably hitting very close to home for some people that are watching right now. I'm just I'm just here to tell you it gets better. It gets better. But also, you know, denial is the first stage of grief. I've been in acceptance for like a decade. It's very easy for me to be flippant about this. But um, there's just some picky eating that I find hard to abide in adults. Not to abide, but to accept without judgment. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm rude, I guess, is really what it comes down to. You know, like, not eating the pizza crust is one where I'm like, come on. 
You ate the pizza crust. It was just hidden from you. Don't you dare. Be cool here. I hate that you both lived. That was super spooky. We even have to be cautious of our bombs, by the way. Because uh, we have scatter bombs. Another one is not eating the crust of a sandwich, which is something that I used to not do when I was a kid. And my thinking was, you know, the crust of the sandwich is a different color. That must mean it's like a, it tastes so different. I don't even want to invite that kind of thing into my life right now. I don't have space for that kind of variety. If you don't eat the crust of your sandwich, because you're like, I don't like the crust as much as the fluffier part of the bread. Sure. Okay. I'll accept it. But I do find it like a little... Like you would rather toss it in the garbage than eat it. That just strikes me as... That strikes me as a little flippant. I'm not even pulling the, you know, they're starving people and wherever. Because like, you know... I'm 5'10", 190. I'm eating a lot of the food that could be sent to another part of the world. However, I'm just saying, like, at some point there's like a convenience factor. Like, wouldn't you rather just finish the sandwich than look around for the closest garbage can and toss it in? I don't know. Because I'm a picky eater, I, I understand the psychology. The psychology is less like, you know, I don't like this. And it's more like, why would I eat it? I might not like it, and if I don't like it, it might taste like poison and ruin my day. Sad bombs, gotta love it. I, dude, I totally think we can make Ares work. This is gonna be a fast one, one way or the other. And I'll admit, the the psychology is still affects me to this day. You know, I was uh, Kate and I were getting dinner uh, at, at a pretty casual place, but. You know, they had a burger on their menu. They also had the Beyond Burger. You know, like the vegetable matter burger that's supposed to taste like, you know, regular beef. Similar to regular beef, at least. And in my head, I was like... And keep in mind, I'm like very pro-vegetarianism. I was vegetarian for a while. Last year we worked in, you know, I was meatless for like two weeks. I didn't really give it up. It was just, you know, my wife came back from vacation. And I was like, well, there's nothing I could do, dude. Help me. I still went. Well, I already know I like the regular burger. It, why would I risk ruining this meal to try the Beyond Burger? Maybe I won't like it. Maybe it'll taste like garbage. Now, keep in mind, I've consumed uh, portobello mushroom burgers, black bean burgers, uh, tempeh burgers, tofu burgers, Satan burgers, Satan, whatever you... I know, you can just make the joke, okay? It, it is a bad name. Uh, so what I do is talk to myself, I went inwards and said, you know what, dummy? Who cares if you don't like it? You'll have something to talk about. You'll have tried it. You might like it. And it's one dinner out of, you know, thousands you're eating throughout your entire life. Who cares, you freaking baby? Call myself an adult baby. It really gets me going. Not like that, you weirdos. You adult babies. It, it motivates me to do what the rational decision is in that context. And, you know, I ate the Beyond Burger, or I ordered it, I should say, and then I ate it, and you know what? I was like, not only is it good, I think this is better than the regular burger at this particular establishment. I can't speak agnostic to the seasonings provided, you know, by other establishments. And I got, and I got an anecdote out of it as well. Anyway, dude, 22 minutes. We win again is the lost. And we didn't talk about Isaac, like, pretty much that entire run. But for now, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, click the like button. That was a great deal. Of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. For now, thanks for watching. I will see you next time. See ya!